Welcome back. This is about hypothesis test for mean and standard deviation known. So we will be using a p-value approach for this one. I highly recommend going over your previous topics so you have an understanding of what a h naught is, what a p-value is, what a rejection region is, and when do you reject your null hypothesis, when do you fail to reject, and what is the verbiage that you use when you're rejecting or failing to reject your null hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to find the p-value. Here they say determine the p-value. There are various ways that we're going to be doing that. You can use the table that's given in your um, homework, but I'm going to show you how to use your class calc. Remember, in the first problem, they're asking us to find the p-value when they gave us the z-value. This is going all the way back to chapter 7 when you have a standard normal distribution given a z-value. How do you find your p-value? To do that, let's go ahead and read the first problem here. What is the p-value for a right-tailed one mean hypothesis with a test statistic? So I have a test statistic of 1.82. So let me go ahead and pull up my class calc. So here is my class calc. Where is it? Yep. I'm going to remember I'm in my graphing calculator. I will pull up my stats, distribution, and plots. All that information is given to you in your notes. If you take a look at your notes, you will go to your normal distribution, right? What is your mean for a standard normal? Zero. What is your standard deviation? One and you will click on your CDF. What are they asking me? They're asking me for the right-tailed. When it's a right-tailed, I know I have to plug it on the left-hand side. What is my value? 1.82. As you can see, I'm going to minimize this one and I'm going to maximize this. As you can see, it is a right-tailed test. And what is my p-value? My p-value is 0 0.0344. I'm going to round it to two decimal places. I'm going to scroll this all the way down so you can see. As you can see, I have my z-value here. They said it's a right-tailed test. Let's say you interchanged. When you interchange on the left hand to right hand, I want you to take a look at your graph. If it's a right tail, your area should be on the right hand side. Like in this case, if it's a left tail, your area should be on the left hand side. So let me minimize this one. It's right here. As you can see, if I minimize this, it's my right tail test. Do you see that? It's shaded on the right hand side if I zoom in. But if it's a left tail, it has to be shaded on the left hand side. So please take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my p-value. My p-value is, they're just simply asking me to find the p-value. The p-value here is 0 0.0344, rounding off to four decimal places. Now let's take a look at the next one. What are they asking me here? Let me move my class calc. Okay, what is the p-value for a two-tailed test? Be very careful on how I do the two-tailed, okay? So what is the p-value for a two-tailed test with my z-value of negative one? Okay, so this is what they're telling me. So they gave me, it's a two-tailed test, right? And this is positive one and negative one. They only should give me one value because when it's a two-tailed, it's exactly the opposite. So it's a negative one and positive one. So these are my two tails, right? In your class calc, you will only get one value. You will only get one value. You have to multiply that by two because you need the other p-value as well. Let me show you what I mean. So when you click on your class calc, here is my class calc. I'm going to move it. Uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that should be good. Remember, I'm only going to do one side. Either you can do your left hand side or your right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and keep it to the right hand for now. You see, positive one, my right hand side. Remember, I also need negative one. So I don't have to do a negative one. I simply do my positive one. What is my p value? My p value for positive one is 0.15. 
0.1586. So that's going to be the exact same value on the left hand side too because it's a two tail test. 0.1586. That's one way of doing it. Or you simply do one side, either right tailed or left tailed. And then what I do is I multiply 0 0.1586. 865525 times 2. What do I end up with? My p value is simply 0 0.3173. Okay? Again, it's pretty simple. You either do your left hand side or your right hand side for your two tail test. And once you have it, you simply multiply it with two because it's two values. All right? Okay? left hand side or right hand side once you have either one of them multiply it with two okay let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem here nancy is a graduate student studying consumer economics she proposed that the cost of health care for people that exercised regularly was less than national average of 1250 per year i'm guessing she's right she decided to survey 45 people that visited her gym at least three times a week about their health costs per year. After calculating the mean using a known population, a known, not unknown, a known population standard deviation, she calculated that the z-score or the test statistic is negative 0.65. So the test statistic is negative. So what does that tell you? It's a left tail test. Using the alternative hypothesis, HA, as you can see, HA, mu is less than 45. What is the p-value of the left tailed test and what with a test statistic of 0 0.65? There are two ways of doing it. You can simply go ahead and plug this here or you can use your... Um, sliders that is given in your uh, homework. So let me go ahead and pull that up. I'll have to pause you for a second. So here is a slider that belongs to this problem. So there are two ways of doing it. I know it's a left tail test. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the left tailed. There you go. And my test statistic is negative 0 0.65. So let me scroll my test statistic to, oops, I think I moved it to right tail. There you go, left tail, negative, my test statistic is negative 0 0.65, oops, I'm going in the wrong direction, ta, 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 da, da, 65, nope, all right, come on, bring it to 65. All right, it did took me a while. I had to turn this side and change it to 6.5, but there I have it. As you can see, it is my test statistic is 0 0.65 and my p-value is 0 0.2578. There are two ways you can do it. Either you can use your normal distribution or I highly recommend if your problem has a slider, go ahead, use the slider to get the p-value. So that's my p-value here. Let me go ahead and copy it down. My p-value is 0.2578. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it down here. I'm going to move my slider. Let me see where is this. I'm going to move it to the right. Just going to keep it right here so we can see. I'm going to just going to go ahead and copy down my p value. My p value is 0 0.2578. Once I have it, I'm going to simply close my class calc. And then take a look at the next one. They said, what is the p-value? So using my sliders, I did get my p-value. And now what they're asking me is go ahead and give us a conclusion. So what does this say? The probability is 0.2578. So if I'm rounding off, this is approximately 25.8%, right, when I round off. So I'm, gonna, I'm only going to look for options that have this probability. Okay, so definitely not this, definitely not this, definitely not this. The only option that has that probability is the first one. Let's go ahead and read that. 
the probability of observing a value of test statistic negative 0.65 or less if the null hypothesis is true is 25.8 percent so this is very important you understand that they say observing a value of 0 0.65 or less why did they say or less because it's my left tail test if it's a right tail test they would say or more and what is my probability 25.8 all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the next one and i think this is also a a slider problem so let me go ahead and pull that up all right so according to the center of disease control and prevention the adults aged 25 years and older have an average height of 67 inches Sarah would like to know if this holds true at her college. So she conducted a hypothesis test using a sample of 100 and using mean and known standard, pop, sorry, known standard deviation of the population. And she calculated her test statistic. So look what's happening here. They're not asking us to calculate any of the values. They're only asking us to give us the p-value. Okay. So this problem is also a slider problem so i'll have to move back and forth here so using the alternative hypothesis h naught is mu 67 inches determine the p-value of a two-tail test remember it's it's a two-tail test because i know mu is again they said it's a two-tail test they simply specified a two-tail test so i know it's a two-tail test with the test statistic zero point um Test statistic negative 1.59, negative 1.59. They already specified it's a two-tail test, so let's go ahead and take a look. My alternative hypothesis, this is, uh, I think this is HA. Give me one second here. Yeah, this is my alternative hypothesis. It has to be HA not equal to 67. There was a mistake in the question there. I went ahead and submitted the feedback. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the slider. <clears throat> we know it's an alternative hypothesis. We know it's a two-tailed. We're going to go ahead and use the sliders to find the p-value. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and bring my slider. Here I have it. It's a two-tailed test. I'm going to move it one, two, and three. There I have my two tails. My test statistic is negative 1.59 so i'm going to move it uh help me here come on work with me there you go negative 1.59 so as soon as i move the negative 1.59 you can see there are two tails there and i'm going to go ahead and write down my p value it is 0 0.1118 as you can see my p value is 0 0.1118 now I'm going to go back to the problem. There you go. I went ahead and wrote down my p-value, negative, oh, sorry, 0 0.1118. All you have to do is move your sliders. You start with what tail test it is and move your test statistic. Once you have your p-value, now let's go ahead and see what's going on. So my p-value, I'm rounding off to 11.2 percentage. Again. What did they ask me? They asked me to pick the right options. So I'm only going to pick the option that has that probability. So definitely not 91.6, definitely not 88.8, .8, definitely not 88.8. .8. My only option with 11.2 is option 1. Let's go ahead and read that. The probability of observing a value of Z test statistic negative 1.59 or less or 1.59 or more if the null hypoth if the null hypothesis is true is 11.2 what do they mean by that so this is your test statistic 
1.59 or greater because it's a right hand side it's a two tail test negative 1.59 or less so they're saying the null hypothesis is true if it is in um, if it is greater than if it's less than this or greater than that okay remember when you reject a null hypothesis when your p-value is less than or equal to alpha all right now the next step is to go ahead and make conclusions very 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 important so once you find your p-value what's your next step you will be using your sliders to find your p-value once you have your p-value you will compare your p-value to alpha if all this is new to you i highly recommend going back to the previous section and looking at what exactly does p-value mean what exactly is alpha type one type two errors so I have my p-value, I'm comparing it to alpha. What The only two things that can happen, my p-value could be less than or equal to alpha. My p-value could be less than or equal to alpha, or my p-value could be greater than alpha. When my p-value is less than or equal to alpha, I reject my null hypothesis. What do I say? I say there is enough evidence at alpha level significance to support my alternative. When my p-value is greater than alpha, I say I fail to reject my null hypothesis. So there is not enough evidence at alpha to support your alternative hypothesis, okay? So this verbiage is very important and we will be using this verbiage to conclude. So please make sure you understand only two things that will happen. Either P will be less than or equal to alpha or P will be greater than. When it's less than, you have enough evidence to support your null hypothesis. When it's greater than, you do not have enough evidence to support, sorry, to support your alternative hypothesis. Did I say null? To support your alternative hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Again, let me go ahead and pull up the slider problem. All right, so Catherine, a new mother preparing to return to work after her maternity leave, would like to make a claim that the average weekly cost of daycare for one child is less than 207. I don't know which state Catherine is, but trust me, it's not that. So Catherine samples 13 separate daycare centers. On the weekly rate and obtains a sample mean of 187.30 okay and now at significance level at 1% significance level Catherine rejects or fails the null hypothesis given the sample data below so they're asking you hey guys Catherine did this uh, hypothesis test Catherine did collect information and Catherine did sample 13 people and Catherine did get um, the sample mean so what is Catherine doing is she rejecting her null hypothesis or is she failing to reject her null hypothesis at alpha is equal to one percent significance level again now in this particular problem they will give you your null hypothesis an alternative hypothesis is given to you so let me take a look at the problem here really quick yes null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is given to you alpha is also given to you test statistic is also given to you so using your sliders the first thing you have to do is find your p-value let's go ahead and take a look so he says the null hypothesis is always equal to and what is Catherine claiming Catherine is claiming that the daycare is less than less than is which side left side so it's a left tail test let me go ahead and pull up that again remember my test statistic is negative 1.46 it's a left tailed okay where is my class calc there you go so it's a left tail test. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it to the left tail. And my alpha is 1%, so 0 0.01. And my test statistic is negative 1.46. So moving to the negative side, da, 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 one, two, three, four, five, there you go, bingo negative 1.46 as you can see my p-value is i'm going to go ahead and copy down the p-value where do i have it 0 0.0721 0 oops wrong pen 
zero again wrong pen zero point zero seven two one that is my p value so remember what you're doing catherine did all the math for you very nice of catherine she's only asking you to use the sliders and tell us what's going to happen is she going to reject the null hypothesis or she's going to fail to reject the null hypothesis so from the sliders i got my p value right once I have my p-value, what do you do? You compare your p-value to alpha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write down. This is my p-value, 0.0721. And my alpha, I'm going to write in blue, which is 0.01. So if I look, my p-value is greater than alpha. When p-value is greater than alpha, what do you do? You fail to reject. you fail to reject. Remember, when p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject your null hypothesis. So let's go ahead and pick the option. Again, step one is to get your p-value. Once you have your p-value, compare it to alpha. In my case, p-value is greater than alpha. When p-value is greater than alpha, what do you do? I reject, I fail to reject my null hypothesis. That means I do not reject my null hypothesis. So this is not my option. This is not my option. Let's go ahead and see which one is. Uh, do not reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the significance level. That is the only reason why I don't reject it. But let's go ahead and look at the others too. Do not reject the null hypothesis because no. Do not reject the null hypothesis because z is negative. No. So my only option is I am not rejecting or failing to reject my null hypothesis because my p-value is greater than alpha. Now, once that's done, my next step is to pick the right verbiage. What do I look for? When p-value is greater than alpha, there is not enough evidence, right? So let's go ahead and look for not enough evidence. Um, Definitely not there is sufficient evidence. Definitely not there is sufficient evidence. I only have to pick from this and this. But let's go ahead and read what they say. Remember, there's not enough evidence at alpha to support my alternative. To support my alternative, not my null, to support my alternative. And what is your alternative? Your alternative says the mean value of the daycare is less than. 207. So let's go ahead and take a look. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the average weekly cost of the daycare of one child is less than 207. There you go. That's my answer. Let's look at the other one. See why it's not right. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the average weekly cost of daycare is less than. Remember, it always has to be your alternative hypothesis. What is your alternative? Your alternative says 207. It's not talking about 187. It's talking about 207. So your alternative says, or the Catherine is claiming, is that the average um, price for daycare is less than 207. But there is not, there's not sufficient evidence to conclude that the weekly cost of daycare is less than 207. So Catherine was wrong. I was right. Just kidding. Let's take a look at the next problem. Okay, let me have this um, slide ready as well. All right, so Catherine is a restaurant manager and would like to make a claim that average number of customers that her restaurant serves per hour is more than 57. So she's saying it's more than. So which tail test? Right tail test, very good. Christina samples 29 hours over the course of a week and records the number of customers served and obtains a mean of 62 customers per hour. Again, keep in mind, in this particular problem, you are not doing any math. You're simply using your sliders, finding your p-value, and giving your conclusion. So please keep that in mind. So again, at alpha 2.5 significance level, 
changing that into decimal 0 0.025, right? Should Christina reject or fail to reject? So for us to go ahead and see if, if Christina should reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis, what do we need? We need to find the p-value first. All right, so to find the p-value, I have to go ahead and look at the slider. Again, I know it is, look at my alternative hypothesis. The alternative and null are given to you. The alternative hypothesis says it is to the right hand side and my alpha is 0 0.05. My test statistic is 2.61. Let's go ahead. Bingo, there I have it. It's a right tail test, right? Let me move this, not this. Let me move this over my face. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, let me let me see if I can minimize this one, but now that's okay. Let me let me just cover this my face. That's okay. So it is a right tail test. Boom, boom, right tail. My alpha is 0 0.025, so moving my alpha. There you go. My test statistic is my next step. It is 2.61, so move it. Da, 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 da. 2.61, mm, yeah. All right, all right, almost, oh, just missed it. There you go, 2.61. So from my, from moving my alpha, my test statistic, let me show you my face here. Let me go ahead and minimize this one too. Yeah, now you can see it. So simply by moving the significance level, moving uh, left tail to right tail, and moving the test statistic, I got my p-value as 0 0.0045. So my p-value is 0 0.0045, right? Once I have my p-value, what do I do? I'm going to go ahead and compare it to alpha so i'm going to move this right here i'm going to keep it you know i'm going to close it we moved our sliders we got the value once i have my p value i'm going to write down my p value which is 0 0.0045 is that correct yeah and i'm going to compare it to my alpha my alpha is 0 0.025 so when you compare your 0 0.045 to 0 0.025 definitely my p-value is less than alpha. When p-value is less than alpha, what do you do? You reject your null hypothesis. Fair enough, you reject your null hypothesis. So that's the first step, find your p-value. Second step, compare it to alpha. Because remember, you are making a conclusion. Ouch, my feet are hurting. So you are making a conclusion. So now let's go ahead and see what's happening here. So did I close this? Yes. I am rejecting my null hypothesis. Why? Because my p-value is less than alpha. So let me scroll this. So definitely I'm going to take off the ones not, no, no, no. So I only have option between the first one and all the way to the fifth one. Okay. So let's see. You reject the null hypothesis because 2.61 is great. No. I reject the null hypothesis because the p-value 0.045 is less than alpha. There you go. Fair enough. Remember, you're only rejecting because your p-value is less than. If your p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. Now, once you know you're rejecting, what is your terminology? There is enough evidence to support your alternative hypothesis. What is your alternative? Your alternative says that the average customers are greater than 57. Let's go ahead and take a look. The verbiage says there is enough evidence. So I'm gonna strike off this one. I'm gonna strike off this one. My only two options are the first and the third. So let's see, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the average number of customers served per hour is greater than 62. Is that what my null hypo my alternative is? 
Look, my alternative is 57, not 62. So don't get confused. Go back. Again, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the average number of customers served per hour is greater than 57. So there you go. So not only the terminology should match, but also your numbers should match. Here it says alternative is 57. So in your options, you should also have 57, not 62. Fair enough? All right. All right, this is the end of your hypothesis. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, please either you can comment below in this video or email me or contact me through Teams. Good luck.